So you have finally, finally, finally made it to your first day of being a CRA. What exactly happens on the first day of being a CRA? Find out after this intro. Hey guys, it's ECRG here, back with another episode. Today I've got a special one. I am going to break down for you what you can expect for your first day being a CRA. So finally, you probably put in about two years, about two and a half to maybe even three years of work in the clinical research industry, maybe as a study coordinator, maybe as a clinical trial assistant, maybe as a project coordinator or a project specialist, heck, maybe even an in-house CRA. And you have finally, finally, finally gotten to your dream position of being a CRA, a clinical research associate. So what can you finally expect on your first day? There's got to be some amazing stuff going on, right? Maybe you're about to book your first trip to that five-star hotel. Maybe you're about to sign up for all these reward points, all these reward miles that you're about to get. Who knows what you might be up to? Who knows where you might be next week? You could be in Los Angeles, California. You could be in South Beach in Miami or something. Who knows? But surely something super exciting has got to be happening on your first day. So I'm going to tell you some things that you can be sure to expect on your first day of being a CRA. But before we get into that, I want to let you guys know that we have our resume review program going on. If you are interested in taking your resume to the next level and finally actually getting to be a CRA if you haven't already, or you're just looking to level up in the clinical research industry by any means, maybe you're at the site level, you want to get to the CRO level, Maybe you're at the CRO level, you want to get to the big pharma level. We got you. Email us, eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com for any inquiries you may have. If you're looking for some one-on-one coaching, some customized coaching, how you can get yourself to the next level, how you can even get into the clinical research industry, email us there also. So surely, what could you possibly expect on your first day of being a CRA? Well, I can guarantee you, the first one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to have an orientation. They've got to have an orientation for you. You're brand new to a company. They're going to bring you into the company the right way. So they're going to set you up with a computer. They're going to um, introduce you to your HR people, the people that helped recruit you into the company. They're going to give you they're going to orient you. They're going to let you know, "Hey, you can go to this website. You're going to they're going to help you fill out your payroll information, your direct deposit." They're going to help you fill out your tax information. They're going to help you uh, talk about benefits. They're going to help you pick which benefits you want and which benefits you can select. So all that good stuff. And, and that could be pretty good stuff, especially if your company's got some good benefits, uh, especially as a CRA. You know, if they're paying for your internet, if they are reimbursing you for a TSA pre-check, if they are going to be, you know, all, all these good things that could happen, um, all these other payments, you know, they're going to talk to you about all these other perks for being a CRA. So they're going to orient you to the company and then orient you to the position. That's the first thing that's going to happen. And then the second thing, you know, orientation can be a little boring. Uh, orientation can go on a little bit along. Each company may do it differently. It could be anywhere from, you know, a day to maybe even a week. Just depends. But shortly after orientation's done, you know, we've got to be going on a five at a five star resort to Miami or something like that. We've got to be we've got to be staying at the Waldorf Astoria in New York next. Right. No. The next thing they're going to have us do is read SOPs. Oh, my gosh. Have I read so many SOPs in my life? Each position with each position you move into clinical research, you're going to have a few days of reading SOPs, standard operating procedures for those of you guys who are not as familiar but these are going to be talking about all the policies, all the corporate policies you may have. And then if they're even giving you studies yet by this point, even your studies are going to have SOPs to go along with it. So those are boring. Those are just normally just reading. Uh, occasionally they may have some videos to go along with it, but typically it's just a PDF of some SOPs. So there it is. That's what's second. So shortly by now, we've, We've spent either a few hours or many days reading SOPs. We've had our orientation. Surely, ECRG, we've got to be going to South Beach by now. Well, 
Not quite. Next, you're probably gonna be meeting with your colleagues and your manager. They're gonna introduce you to your colleagues and manager. So they're gonna introduce you to the other CRAs in the area. Maybe some are in the office. Uh, definitely the clinical trial leads are gonna be more office-based potentially. Um, whether you meet them in person or you meet them over the phone or over Skype or over WebEx or whatever you're using, they're gonna introduce you to your team. They're gonna introduce you to your colleagues. They may even assign you a buddy. If you're more entry level, if you're new to being a CRA, they're probably gonna assign you a mentor of some sort. So they're definitely gonna make that introduction to you and you can be sure that's gonna happen definitely on the first day. And then here's another thing that I added because finally, finally, we've got to be going to South Beach by now. Like surely if I'm not at South Beach yet or I'm not, I'm not making a reservation for my South Beach hotel yet, I'm about to be, I'm about to be uh, pissed. ECRG, you lie. CRA is not the best career because I'm not at South Beach by the end of the first day. But I'm going to throw you guys a bone here. You are going to review the travel policy. You are likely to review the travel policy. And now this is fun because the travel policy, you actually can see if you're going to be having per diem. So you get to see how much that is. I've seen anywhere from $55 up to $100 maybe even $125 for high cost cities. So depending on the city, what that means is if you're staying in San Francisco, you're gonna have a little bit more to spend because things are a little bit more expensive there than if you are in Louisville, Kentucky, for example, uh, which I don't think is, there's actually some surprisingly, uh, you know, cities that are just kind of normal that are high cost. I believe Raleigh, Durham is considered a high cost city too, which, uh, if you've ever been there before, it's not that expensive. But, you know, and, and quite frankly, the amount of money they give you, like, uh, let's be honest, you could you could spend $100 in San Francisco uh, pretty easily. Like, I don't think I don't think you need to be trying that hard to do that. Uh, I mean, I think I think you still have to try kind of hard to to do that. Um, you could eat on $100 pretty much anywhere in the USA. It's not like you couldn't do that. Uh, but they, div they definitely do like to offer you a little bit more wiggle room. But what else is on the travel policy? This is going to be thing like, things like preferred airlines, whether like American Airlines, Southwest, Delta, United, whatever it is. They got preferred partnerships with hotel chains usually, Hilton, Marriott, just to name, name a few. Then also they're going to talk about the credit card that you can use. Are they going to make you get a corporate card or are you going to be able to use your own? Definitely recommend using your own if you have the opportunity to and if you've got the cash flow to do it. That's another thing. We, we did a video on why cash can help you get promoted or why it's always good to have cash on hand. This is one of those reasons I didn't talk about in the video. But you've got to be able to front your expenses on your credit card if you're going to be using your credit card. And this is a way you can triple or quadruple, literally quadruple the amount of points you can get and amount of perks you can get if you're able to use your own credit card and accrue those personal points, as well as the airline points, as well as the hotel points. You get a lot more if you're able to use your own credit card. So you definitely wanna make sure you have cash on hand when you're being a CRA. So all that thing, all those things go into the travel policy. And those are all things you're gonna go over on your first day. So just to recap, we're gonna have a company orientation, maybe, maybe a study orientation, but that's a little early. Next, we're going to go over SOPs. These are the standard operating procedures of how you do things at the company. Um, once again, these are also on your study, but it may be a little early for your first day. Another thing you're going to talk about is you're going to meet your colleagues and manager. They're going to go over how things operate. They're going to go over, uh, you know, acclimate you to the position even more. They're going to maybe even assign you a mentor. And then the last thing you're going to talk about potentially is the travel policy. You're definitely going to talk about this during the first few days because this is important to your life as a CRA. This is something you're going to be doing a lot of. They're going to be talking to you about expense reports, about uh, per diem. They're going to be talking to you about airlines and hotels that you're affiliated with and can use to get to where you need to go. So those are things you can be for sure they're going to talk to you about the first day. So if you have any questions, comment down below. If you've got any more things that you think they will talk to you about or I'm missing. I'm sure I'm missing a few things, but these are just some big highlights I remember from my first day as a CRA. And I did want to throw you guys a bone, especially with the travel policy, because I know a lot of you guys are thinking you're going to be on South Beach already. 
you know, three come 3 p.m. on your first day, you better be in South Beach, right? All right, guys, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, take care.